All right, we are back with Metal Gear Solid 2. How's this? Take it away. Hello, everyone. Welcome and thanks for having us here today. I have the honor to show you probably the greatest game in the series, at least for me, arguably, it is Metal Gear Solid 2 in the PC version on normal difficulty. I'm not here alone, though. I have also Ru Hyoga with me as well. Hello, how's it going? Hello, it's going very well. How are you today, sir? I'm also feeling very good. I just had a little bit of sushi for lunch and I'm feeling ready to go. Normal is a great difficulty, a little bit uh, harder already than very easy, which is the most common run version of the game. But not as challenging as extreme yet, as I learned in the past week where I started learning this. So let's get ready. I'm going to select Radar 1 here. Everything else has been pre-selected already. And we're going to start in 3, 2, 1. Here we go. All right, so at the beginning, of course, we have the little tanker chapter where we run around a snake and we're going to start right away by setting up a little trick. You will notice how I will spam my ammo to make it empty. And that is because I want a magazine. Here we go. I'm just walking up. What is next then? Quick roll and through the door. So let's do carry over here, which uh, matters sometimes. We actually have strategies where we get an attention alert and just continue on. But especially in the tanker, for the most part, we're just gonna play clean in the beginning. And I'm constantly spamming my ammo here. There we go. Little roll to not get seen. Work perfectly. And then we're coming to the first boss fight. So I'll let Ru explain the boss fight. Oh, jeez. And then I see you on the other end. So yeah, the first boss fight in Tanker, that is Olga. There's a small factor of RNG with Olga. Uh, it can determine how fast you can defeat her, essentially. What you want to do is get what we call an Olga loop, where she will hide behind where she currently is. And instead of getting a reload animation with her talking about the unit, you can just keep popping off headshots. And it looks like House White have got it. Yep. Got Look it. at that. That's good. Cool. Olga loop. Perfect. That does save a lot of time over the version where she plays out the cutscene. And it's pure RNG if she goes left around or right around. So we got lucky today. Let's go. Olga's being very kind to us today. Mm hmm. Let's see how the next trick will do for us. <laughs> Hmm. I'm just going to walk down here, and we're going to make our way down to deck two. It's all the way at the bottom, basically. And just at the beginning of the year, we found a new trick that we can do. We can extend our hitbox by throwing a throwable item, and then turn it into a door trigger, which normally the door would be closed, but because we can touch the door trigger from the other side, it just so happens that the game's like, well, you touched it, I guess you can go on. So that's what we're going to set up now. Oh, that's fine. This alert I want to carry because in the second next room, the room after this one, I actually have it a little bit easier with an alert active. So I'm just going to shoot this guy here to delay him a little bit. And now I'm going to make my way over to deck A. And in deck A, there's this closed door. There you go. Thanks to the alert, everyone is out of my way because the game expects us to actually go down the right side. But well, we're going to ignore that and go down the left side. That's why nobody's here. And there you go. Glitching through the door by just throwing an item and then turning into it. Normally this will be closed. Saves us around 30 seconds because we don't need to go through the engine room, which would be on the right here. And then just immediately shoot the sensors and we can move on into deck two. Marizano Bridge checkpoint passed. What's coming next is... Uh, oh, go ahead, please. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, go ahead. <laughs> I was just about to say, so yeah, what is coming up next is the, it's kind of like a pseudo boss, it's a guard rush. I just got to get through these two corridors and you are met with, I believe, seven guards on normal. Mm, five plus three, so eight in total. Eight. There you go. And again, on normal as opposed to... European extreme, and you're able to take this fight lethally. Take you get to complete it a little bit quicker, even though there are fewer guards. But on your extreme, you want to go 
a lot of people like to go for their big boss strats. Mm. Want to specifically make sure that the guy behind the box is going down. I think that's already fine with them. I think they all came out. Beautiful. Yep, that was very fast. I like that one. Love it. And we're coming to the final section of this tanker chapter. The holds of the HR3. I'm currently 14 oh. seconds ahead of PB, which is very nice. <laughs> oh, nice. And here Let's see how long that lasts. Variants <laughs> of uh, Ladder Glitch. Mm -hmm. There's four different variants, if I remember rightly. Technically, yeah. If you count glitches, of course, as well. We just go down. Yeah. <laughs> but there's like three glitched variants of that. Hmm. What's two? I'm just going to press here so everyone turns to the right and I'm just going to hold everyone up. There you go. I'm constantly unequipping so I don't shoot. Last but not least, we're going to take four pictures here. One from the left, one from the front, from the right, and then with the Marine logo. And uh, you can all testify for me that I did definitely take that Marine logo picture, right? Like 100%. Yeah, I, I, I saw you get the Marine logo. Yeah, just there. Well, let's ask Autocar what he's thinking. <laughs> Gonna put it on the machine, and once we get four times confirmation, we're done with tanker, moving into the big plant section, the main part of the run. There you go, that's it. We, the Marine. It's always nice to see Otacon giving us the good news that we did show him the Marine's logo. Yep. And now we're moving on into the main part, as I said, the plant section. We say goodbye to Snake as a playable character, and we're gonna continue on here as Raiden. Now, Raiden has a cool characteristic. He does um, aerials or cartwheels, and these are slightly faster rather than just walking. So when you see me do these little cartwheels, that is because it is actually faster rather than just walking the distance. So long as I don't hit a wall on the way. Because angles are very mean in this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, each cartwheel saves, what is it, about 0 0.1 of a second? I think it's 0 0 0 0.8. 8. Depending on the way you use it and how good it is, yeah. Hmm. It's definitely not that little, but it does count for a little bit. I'm just going to quickly insert in my data. And because we're actually playing on New Game Plus specifically, in the plant section there will be later a tutorial where we can explain how to freeze bombs. And if you play a new game, we cannot skip that cutscene and we're going to have to watch it for like 69 hours. And that is just not a time that I want to present a game at a marathon. So we play New Game Plus, we can save that time. Speaking of, we have a little bit of time before the elevator comes down, so I'm going to use it quickly to get some rations here. Which I don't really need anymore, but it's always good to have these backup rations, just in case you need a little bit more health. We're playing on normal difficulty, which comes, as, uh, still, as I said, alerts carry past rooms. And so, um, it is very quickly happening that I get seen, shot, and then lose a lot of health. There we go, just knock this guy out, elevator comes down, and then we can go without being seen. Awesome. And uh, another thing I want to touch on that uh, some people might have noticed, uh, in the bottom right, you will see um, text changing, uh, currently test active, mm -hmm. and that is a turbo. Yep. Uh, it was introduced because on... European Extreme, there's a sequence that comes up where for I think 60, 60 seconds, seconds. Yeah, on PlayStation 60 2. seconds. It's insanely on, long. Yes. You've got a mash triangle and it is very, very unforgiving. And it just come down to a uh, to a vote to allow turbo, yep. which then has also helped introduce other time saving strats throughout the run as well. But the main part was for for that torture sequence. Yeah. Saving your wrists and your thumbs. And I can change the text as I want to. You also see my life. Actually, it's not named life. It's named off my username. It's a little bit of a watermark thing that we can do, basically. I think it's nice. And the test active is basically just because I'm house test, so I thought it would be a fun thing to say, hey, test active, despite that no test being active at all. <laughs> People have come up with uh, lots of different variations, what they call that. Some call it like spam active because somebody said, oh, you have spam movement. So <laughs> just losing time, I guess. And other fun things. 
And now that we met uh, Pliskin, definitely not Snake. It's time to meet Stillman, the bomb, defu bomb disposal expert. As I said, he would normally explain to us on new game for multiple hours how to freeze these bombs and how to get rid of them, you know, totally safe for work. Uh, we're gonna skip that because we're experts already on New Game Plus, so we don't need to watch that cutscene. Of which are actually two that you cannot skip then on New Game. And so we're gonna enter here and just gonna hold down the buttons to skip these cutscenes as quickly as possible. And at the end of this, we get a lovely bottle of Febreze. Yeah. There you go. Now we start the sort of bomb defusal segment. Gotta get everything ready. It's new ready. Febreze is here ready in my hand. And we start right away with the one here in the bathroom. Must be very rare Febreze. Like exotic level rareness. If we can take out bombs. I love that. Right, we're gonna quickly shoot the sensor here. To get rid of it so we don't get an alert. Normally on very easy, for example, we would just ignore that because on very easy the alerts actually reset when you leave a room and enter a new one. But then starting on easy and of course also on normal difficulty, these alerts carry over and then change also how the guards behave. Their different positions. So we gotta play basically so we are playing as we are used to everyone. For example, this one that we just hold up here. I'll just leave the room like that. Gonna shake actually him here. Copy. And he will fall over the rating, but this will be a war accident. This will not be coming in a statistic as a kill. Doesn't count. He was too close to the edge. It's not my fault he fell over. Freeze. And here's strat A. We got the next bump, for which there's a little bit of strategy. There's also a little box on the bottom left that we want to grab. So we're going to take that intentional alert. All the guards will now go to the camera that's on the top left. I'm just going to have my time here at the bottom left where nobody can see me. Going to grab this little box that we need later. And then I can move basically at the bottom of the room where nobody will be. Nice and easy. The bomb that's and, normally uh, here. Yo, go ahead. Oh, sorry, I was going to say. And uh, in, in this room, you see a nice little bit of tech called uh, Coolant Rise, which uh, when you're laying down, if you equip your coolant, quickly stand up, you cancel an animation. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's just something that can save time over the run. It's uh, not a huge amount of time, but the amount of times you get to do it, it, it saves a decent amount. Yeah, just a few seconds. And sometimes it's easier to immediately you know, cancel standing up and be standing and then leaving before any guards can see you. As we can see now, I'm leaving the room, but the caution stays on. That changes a little bit how the guards work in this room, for example, and also in the next one. Especially for the next room, that will be key for us because the guard will actually be out of our way. I'm just going to go here. Ignore that guy, just walk through him. And now in this room, as you see on evasion, there would be a guy coming down this little hallway, but now he's on this position, and we basically just sneak past him. As it goes. I'm going to spray this one. And there we go. Gonna quickly leave. I'm going to get a re alert, which is fine. We're going to carry that basically for the next two rooms, which is not too difficult. And here we're going to see another few. Nice things, for example, did you know that you can grab the claymores off the ground if you're hitting just the right distance? I'm going to try to do that now. There you go. Literally just landed on the claymore without exploding. With a little cartwheel to the ground. That skull suit of Raiden, keeping him safe, picking those up. Mm -hmm. I'm going to shoot the wall now to get real alert to delay the guards that are coming from the top. And now I'm just going to do a quick cartwheel through the wall. And not get delayed at all. Awesome. Alert's gone because it's always resetting here on this room. And now we can move on without an alert and without any delays. I'm gonna quickly. Uh, I didn't want to go in the box. I wanted to go back to my sensor. <laughs> <laughs> guess, I, guess I'll do it later. It's fine. Doesn't matter. All right, another box uh, bomb up here, but also a box. And I just gotta quickly set up my menus again. There we go. Gonna diffuse that, and now there's actually only one left that we need to diffuse in strut D. But we're gonna go a little bit differently. There's also a story flag that we need to trigger for that. We need a second sensor because we learned, oh, actually, the person that's planting all these bombs called Fat Man, 
actually has two different types of bombs, and we can only detect the small ones with sensor A, but we learned there's also bigger ones for which we need a second sensor that's still been made for us. So how do we get that? Well, we're going to use the conveyor belt system, which is an internal game system where if you are inside of a box and you hit the load zone, one of these uh, conveyor belts, you can get teleported across the plant. So I'm going to go up here, ideally, not falling off. There you go. And because we have this little glitch here where we don't need to wait for the conveyor belt to stop, which it normally does, it's actually faster to go around here counterclockwise versus the clockwise round. Got the sense and be here. And I left without the alert coming in. If an alert comes in during transition, it does count for the statistic, but it does not count for the next room, which is key for us here. And that was close. You don't want to... The camera sees you, but you don't want to have an actual alert come in here. Because we want to do it ourselves. Like this. Strategy is a little bit hectic, when we want to just defuse the bomb here on the bottom. But we also want to have an alert trigger here, so all the guards storm to the top and leave us alone here at the bottom. There we go. Very quickly get up. And we're currently in an evasion state. That evasion state will turn into a caution state. And in caution, only then uh, cards are coming in again. So we're going to quickly distract this guy here with the Febreze. He doesn't like the smell of it. I wonder why. Maybe it's a little bit old, who knows. But it gives us enough sound here to go to the door. Evasion changes into caution, and now we get a mandatory coding that we have here. If we were to leave too early, we wouldn't get it here. We would get it later, and also the guards would be in different positions. So everything would be a little bit messed up. And all we need to do, basically, is just wait in front of the door for the evasion to turn into the caution. Alright, we do this now for a second time with the conveyor belt. With a different box. The next box will actually get us to strata A again, where we need to go. Oh, oh geez. <laughs> Normally you can do a conveyor glitch. <laughs> yeah. That conveyor glitch is definitely a lot harder than uh, it looks like. If you push forward too far, uh, you can soft lock yourself. You get stuck behind the, the yep. conveyor itself. You drop down and you can no longer climb back up. Oh, yeah. It's definitely a problem very easy. Thankfully, normal, I think the guards can hear us, but the problem is I killed the one that was right next to conveyor belt, so the other one that would be left would still not hear us, I think, on this difficulty. But here we go. We are now at the bottom, back where we began, and we have only one more bomb to defuse. Awesome. So we're going to go over here quickly. I'm going to do a cartwheel down the stairs, which is faster rather than just walking. I'm going to position myself precisely a little bit back. So I don't want to fall down into the water, which happens automatically if you're too close to the edge. After the next codec here, you get moved a little bit forward. And if you're too close, you will actually jump into the water, which costs a massive amount of time. I'd rather walk quickly. All right. And coming up next is another, in quotes, boss fight. Uh, the lovely fortune fight. Mm -hmm. Luckily, we can uh, manipulate fortune to get through this fight quicker uh, you can't damage her she she's called lady luck bullets will just go around her so you can't damage her you've got to wait a set amount of time for the boss fight to finish but you can manipulate it by making her destroy a certain amount of the room so then just get it done quicker mm -hmm. there we go just waiting here for a few boxes to get destroyed And ideally, she will now begin shooting these barrels. There we go. One to the left. And there should also be a cutscene coming in now. There it is. That basically marks the halfway point of the fight. Wonderful second barrel shot. If she shoots these early, that saves me like one second. She would shoot these barrels anyway at the end of the fight, but if they're already gone, she doesn't need to do that, and we can much quicker go to the end. So I'm just standing here and I'm literally holding the coolant because I want the SOCOM in my previous lot. Whoa, don't get shot. And there we go, this marks the end of the fight. Yeah, item manipulation is something that's very key in the speedrun. We're playing on the so-called previous setting, not on unequip. If you played Metal Gear Solid 3, you would always be forced to unequip, so if you tap R2, you would only 
basically bring back the last item or the basically nothing item. You just go to nothing in your hands. But it just too, we can gladly, there we go, uh, go between two Ooh. weapons back and forth. Yeah, there are two claimers on the ground there. If you touch them, you lose like three seconds. So I'm glad that I didn't do that. One distraction shot here and we're good to go. Alright, I'm gonna set up a few more menus here. So now this part of the run we are going to the helipad to fight Fat Man, uh, the person who has been putting down all these bombs that we've got to clean up with the Febreze. Mm -hmm. Gonna quickly grab the N9 here. I'm gonna get this alert, which is fine. Don't need to do much here. It's gonna go into the box. If I am in the box and I get shot, I still lose health, but at least I don't get staggered. So whenever I get shot, I try to stay in the box here to not stand still for a short moment. For example, with these ciphers here, just stay in the box and you can still continue running. And there we go. We're gonna do the second time the trick that I've already done here. Shoot in the wall, delay the guards that are coming down. Going back in the box and just do a copy towards the door to not get stopped. All right, now we actually go to the top and start the Fatman fight, which is the actual first boss fight of this plant chapter. I'm a little bit nasty. Hopefully we're lucky today and he moves where I want him to move. Uh, let's see how it goes. Nice, nice fast fuse there as well. Mm-hmm. Start here with the claymore. Shoot once in the head. And now I start defusing bombs. And the whole point of this entire spiel here is to shoot him down, ideally, if I can find him. Oh. Is it just spinning in circles? What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not seeing this done yet. Oh, Jesus, where is he? Yeah, already a little bit of time loss. Gonna wait here. One more time. What? Dude, where are you going? <laughs> he moves in mysterious ways. Alright, there you go. And we still have enough time to quickly defuse the second bomb here. Alright. Not a terribly good fight. Sometimes you can deal with him, of course, easier, depending on where he stands, but yeah, it's fine. Alright. Time to move on with the next story bit, which is fighting games. Uh, Ames, the next bit of lovely <laughs> RNG. <laughs> yeah, there's multiple places where Ames can be in the Shell One core. Uh, we've got God Ames, which is normally northeast. And uh, when you're on PB pace, he's usually northwest, which yep. is the, the worst position for him to be in. I'm going to quickly set up menus again here. So on very easy, the AKS definitely need would be in two positions. It would be in the Strat House, uh, Strat F warehouse, <laughs> and additionally also in the Shell One Core where we need to go anyway later. That saves us a little bit of time playing on very easy, but we're playing on normal, so we're gonna go to the warehouse quickly down there and grab it. If you do, the, there is no guard next to the AK that only starts I think on hard difficulty. So all we need to do now is basically just delay a little bit, keep our BDU on, and then. Go on every way to grab the items that we need. We're also going to grab this stun here to the left. Because we're going to do a little bit of a setup. And once we have acquired all these items, we're good to go. There you go. To actually now go to Shell One Core because our entire costume is basically complete with the AK and the BDU together. And uh, this costume will only keep you undetectable from guards in the Shell 1 core. Is uh, There's different uniforms inside the core and outside the core. Mm -hmm. I'm going to quickly waste this one stun because I actually only want to use one here and I want to be on nothing later. So by wasting one stun, I actually come back and when I use that, I have on previous nothing, which is very useful for us. Go here, press the button, outfit complete, there we go. Now we're going to go down to B2 to grab another story item, which is the directional microphone. Because we actually don't know how Ames looks like, this fight being on New Game Plus. We got to listen to the heartbeat of that person, because he has a pacemaker. He's 
change pace aims. By the way, pace and plus zero on a PB, so it could still happen. It's not dead yet. <laughs> Did you stun inside the lift then? Nope. Completely forgot that. Let's just do it in non <laughs> fashion. <laughs> 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 ah, it's fine. It cost me like three seconds. Oh, anyway. so I, I lit as you said, I was like, oh yeah, right, it's done. <laughs> Yeah, there's normally a trick. You can uh, throw a stun inside this lift. Um, <laughs> it will get you an alert, but it will keep the lift open or elevator for yeah. <laughs> our uh, <laughs> friends across the pond. Um, and it will keep it open, saving some of the RNG. You can get fast elevators, which as soon as you press the button, it will open. But other times, it will. It likes to take its time. Mm. Oh, shit. That's not what I want to do. It's the enemy. I need. Get up. On. Nothing. Just moving on. There you go. <laughs> if you're too quick to unequip all your stuff, which is only there really to save time on PlayStation 2, um, <laughs> can happen that he actually sees you and is like, oh, hold up, man. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get grabbed here. But in any case, uh, moving on. We gotta find aims. Uh, since we're playing on New Game Plus, he can be in, oh my god, in one out of 20 positions, and he's exactly at the perfect position. Top right corner, exactly where we want to happen. That's a You'd nice like time save. Aims. Yeah, that's the so-called <laughs> guard aims. The very first position we are checking. Awesome. So despite losing some time, <laughs> goofing around, we still got rewarded with this little time save. I mean, <laughs> you, you can't, you can't pick your fights. You just go ahead. <laughs> Let's go. We take that. Yeah, we one, take of that. The what, one of the unfortunate things with this BDU uniform. For some reason, the texture resolution for it is insanely huge, uh, which is why we like to unequip it when, when possible, especially when it's on PlayStation. I don't even go. I'm gonna run off here. What up, this guy? Can't be that one. And just leave for the door before the realert can come in officially. So we still stay on caution here, which is very important for us. If you get the real alert, normally it would be on evasion, and that would change a few of these rooms. But on caution, basically all of the things are still very easy to deal with. So we're gonna just go ahead and grab now the PSG one, which is the sniper. We quickly take care of this guy. He sees us in the video relatively late, shoots us, but that's fine. I'm just gonna knock him out by giving him the punch punch kick combination. And with the AK in hand, we do a little bit extra damage, which is just enough to knock him out like that. Nothing here. And it has to be the AK. The pistol is not enough. All right, now we're just gonna yeah, make our way over to Strutty. Yes. I don't think I don't think I'd enjoy getting hit with the butt of an AK. No, no, <laughs> I no. Think no. That would I think that would put me on the ground pretty quickly. Absolutely. It's gonna go over here. The BDU, despite uh, the missing headpiece, is still giving us a little bit of camel and cutting the line of sight from enemy guards short, so I still leave it on. Technically, now I can, for example, put it off. But in the warehouse, uh, sorry, in the conveyor belt room, for example, I still like to leave it on just to not have any issues. Yeah, there's a bit of a pseudo camo system. Um, like, if anybody has played Snake Eater, you'll know there's a camo detection system, and when you're wearing the BDU, the guards won't spot you as close. Mm -hmm. Right, it's time to Which shoot out some sensors now. Oh yes. And then on to one of the, the fun bosses. Oh yeah. Ah, kinda like it actually. No, missed that one. I'm gonna catch it later. That's fine. If we can yeah, hang on. Why is how this not <laughs> shaking? Well, there's a little um RAM manipulation that I can do. Uh which I did before we even started the run. I loaded up a safe where I can grab Pentas. And I can like a hundred of them and then if I take a continue there you go and start a new run for as long as I don't die the pentas amount will keep stored in the memory so I basically took like a hundred of them and then I don't have to worry at all about eating pentas because I still have the one actor from the last time I played now nah, Mr. Plus One that's fine uh, position four die shots. There we go. So the cutscene will be weighed out. Until now. Shoot him. Get away. 
with iframes as we go over the ledges here. Oops. A little bit over here. And now we wait for him to attack us. Ideally, we give him two shots. Then I'm gonna hide quickly. And I'm gonna send off a few after that. Looks good, looks good. Let's see if he hits again. Nice. Ah, uh, missed one. That should still hit. Yes. And now we have the missile phase, of which hopefully we can send off two shots. And that's the end of the fight. Not perfect, Lovely but... Lovely fight. Yeah, definitely good, definitely good. I can't complain. <laughs> you can end it a little bit earlier by, for example, not missing that uh, six shot that I tried to set up there. But it's a little bit finicky, especially if you grab the ammo first. Normally you grab it after that, but we're still fine. We're still fine. Right, so normally you would equip the BDU now again for the next segment. I'm gonna try, which is a little bit of a pro strat, to distract the first guard by shooting with the AK. Let's see if it works. Ideally, I only distracted the first one. Which I did. Let's go. Yeah, the first one gets distracted, and then he will be a little bit further ahead in his cycle. And he will turn around just as I want to go over the ledge. Has to not give me an alert, yeah. Which saves me basically not to put on the BDU, which is like five slots away from us. Yes, saves a small menu, but every little time save counts. Yep. And here comes in the animation council once again. We are slightly moving faster when we are crouch walking like that. If we swap between two weapons back and forth. There you go for my second shaft here, and now I'm good to go. Not needing to worry at all about these ciphers. So I'm gonna get the AK ammo, just to be a little bit safer, because we need it later for a boss fight. A sort of second guard rush. Understood. And now we're on our way to fight the president in the Shell 2, which has been partially destroyed because the second bomb has actually not been able to be uh, frozen. But thankfully, at least we did our job freezing the first one in Strat A, so not the entire thing would go down. There we go. Got a turn around here. Shout out to Apache Smash, but who's uh, saving us one frame, teaching us that we can turn around doing this cutscene, and then we immediately look to the left instead of needing to turn left. It was important to recognize the people that save us time here, even as just one frame. And we're gonna go downstairs once again to grab another key item, which is the Nikita. We're gonna go for a lovely swim. As I explained, Shell 2 is a little bit under the water because the big bomb actually exploded here, but it will be fine for us. Because we already know where the Nikita is. Thankfully, it's always in fixed positions. Very easy, it's relatively close. On easy, it's just around the corner and then normal and any other difficulty after that. And we were a little bit down the hallway, but it's fine. Thankfully, we do have enough oxygen. We don't need to dive at all. We can just go in one big swim. There we go, one more to the right. And thankfully, the Nikita hitbox is super big, so we don't even need to die for it. As we swim on Buffett, we can already grab it. Now turn around and just make it out of the water. Here we go. I'm gonna prepare my menus once again here. Now I have the Nikita on active and the Stinger on previous because we need the Stinger later. And it's time to meet the president. Who's thankfully not asleep on normal. <laughs> Starting on hard, I think he's asleep. We gotta wake him up quickly. And the challenge is we gotta knock out an electric panel, which is inside the room where the president also is. And if he's too close to the panel, we accidentally kill him. Or he could just walk into the thing, which would also be bad for us. <laughs> Let's see how it goes this time. I could've done a faster version, but once again, I forgot about it. I'm so used to extreme <laughs> difficulty now. Go away, you fuck! Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> That's the challenge with the president. He can walk just in a way. If, I think if I would have exploded that electric panel there, as he stands right in front of it, go away, go away, go away, go away, go away. Yeah, if he counts like that, he's fine. But if he's right next to it, the explosion radius will kill him. So, phew, close call. Yeah, the president is uh, somehow, <laughs> uh, if he crouches, he's immune to the explosion damage. I'm not sure why, but. Yeah. <laughs> Even on extreme, I learned that the hard way. Thankfully, on extreme, if he cowers like that, then he's fine. But if he's just flat on the floor, for example, he would die. It's like, uh -huh. <laughs> 
at least some very easy you can shoot him twice until, before he dies but you know starting after that just one slight shot and it's over there are instances where you can like just strafe in and you think you hit him but then you don't and he can even do a cartwheel away from the nikita which looks the best way if you're just doing the random cartwheel away <laughs> <laughs> Oh, just seeing in chat, comfy mail. Am I yeah. going crazy or do I keep hearing fallout sign sounds? Yes. Uh, <laughs> you're not going crazy. You do keep hearing fallout no, no, sounds. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I don't watch it. <laughs> yeah, so uh, this little text active thing, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, is a little plugin that we have from a community member called Beeman. And he not only has a little text appear for us if you turn turbo on and off, but also a little sound plays. And we use the VAT sound from another runner. Um, we introduced that. It's definitely faster than what the PC fix comes with. The PC fix actually comes with enable of rapid fire, which is a very long thing to hear if you turn it on and off constantly. So the little fat sound is so much nicer and that's why we chose to implement it here as a little toggle sound for us. I'm going to do a little grid here where I just swim against the corner of the room and I gain constant height and that allows us to go past the roof here, saving us to do the swim all the way through, you know, the whole way here. I don't need to open the door, I don't need to skip a cutscene, and I can also skip the codec that's at the end here. It's gonna go like this, bam, and then go into the load zone for the next boss fight. <sighs> not perfect, but it's fine. We got, we got enough ammo, I'm, just, I'm not gonna take a reset here. <laughs> it's just one sting out rocket short, and there we go, that's it. <laughs> You gotta keep your timing right here. Um, you can shoot him over and over again, but only when um, Bamp wants health bar starts to go down. If it's red, that's cool, but you gotta wait until it. Oh jeez, until he actually starts to see the life drain. And uh, that way we can just loop him over and over again, and the leaf a variant where you know, just staying stuck like this and can be beaten in like a few seconds. On normal difficulty, we need ten of these, and we gotta time ourselves well. If it happens like that at the end. Shoot too early or slightly too late, then it's sadly over and we gotta wait for him to come out again. And I believe if you want to turbo through it, is it 20? Where you can just hold <laughs> the shoot button? Yeah. There's like different amounts. If you are very easy, for example, you need to shoot him six times. But if you use turbo, you want to have 12 because you gotta shoot off one in between that doesn't count and then immediately shoot off the next one. And then goes up all the way to extreme where I think you have 16 that you need to hit him. Which is still faster if you get it first try rather than the non-lethal version. But it's it's getting only more tricky the higher the difficulty. Alright. It's time for Emma. And you might think, ah, oh, there's nothing happening. We're just gonna drag her all along. Oh, just be excited. There's two nice little tricks that we can do with her. Let's save her some time. If they work out right away. Uh, I'm always doing these now in marathons just because it looks cool. And if I fail, I can just try again. It's not that bad. PB is looking a little bit sad right now. I'm plus 33 against my timer. There were just a few things that didn't go that perfect, but it's fine. We're still gonna show the show. And uh, yeah, just stay tuned what we do with Emma on the next floor. It de definitely spices up the the mandatory boring escort. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can totally do that in the beginning without the trick that I'm about to do. And it's generally accepted as, you know, high end level stuff, something where if you really want to squeeze out the last few seconds. So if you want to do uh, this when starting to learn the game, don't <laughs> just do the variant where you drag all along. It's fine. I accidentally touched here the little uh, mine. Now Emma starts losing health, but we're going to be done before her health bar even goes down to the A of her name, which is good. Because as soon as her health goes down to the A level, she will constantly sit down, but we're still good here, thankfully. Just going to put it before the box begin. And I'm just going to gently guide her over to the elevator. And now in the elevator is where the fun begins. Yeah, when I played this casually, I always used the uh, Febreze to remove the bugs. I didn't know you could grab her like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. If we're lucky, she vanishes. Like that. Uh, we're going to leave the room, come back, and when we come back, she will be not on the elevator at the top, 
But actually, she will be almost at the end of the room, saving us plenty of time that we don't need to drag all along. And additionally, also, it saves us um, needing to get rid of some guards. For example, this one is not asleep, or just yawning, but he's just around the corner. And on the bottom of the room, there's only one guard instead of two. There you go. There's also no guard up here that would normally be here at the end of the hallway. So we can just move on like that. A little bit smoother, a little bit nicer. And the same thing we can try again also in the next room. Slightly different setup. Also less reliable, unfortunately. I try to bump into you like that, just constantly pushing forward. And if we're lucky... I'll try not to have a fall over. I don't think she likes us today, so I'm just going to reset. <laughs> Normally, after a few times, she will just vanish once again. I leave the room, I come back and she will be at the end. Didn't happen this time, so we're going to go with the... Regular strategy where I just drag along. It's fine. We tried. At least the first time it worked, so you can imagine how it looks like with the second one as well. Just gonna drag along now here. We just grab the chaff. Gonna pop the chaff up here. And then we don't need to worry about the ciphers because they will be basically stunned. And the second demo zip, it will put her in the doorway that we're about to go through. So it saves having to walk her all the way down this way. It's great. It's so uh, much easier. So turn off the fire. And yeah, luckily, she she's, sit she's sitting within a well, like the zone where you wouldn't need to even escort her any further closer to the door. You can literally just go all the way to the end and trigger the cutscene. Oh well, next time maybe. <laughs> That's why I said like it's not really worth it if you're just starting to learn the run and the difficulty. Um, that is one of those things that you only really do if you want to squeeze out the last few seconds. Or if you want to brag how you practiced hours and hours on end and sometimes still can't get it, unfortunately. <laughs> but oh well. We're about to begin the next segment, which takes a little bit of time. It's like five and a half minutes. There we go. Of just waiting for Emma to take the bus. I wish she would take a literal bus because that would be faster than rather waiting five and a half minutes for her to walk all the way over to shell one. <laughs> but we got a little bit of stuff here to do, so uh, once again I'm thankful that I didn't take it continue yet. I can just aim here at uh, the little walkway and gonna get rid of some clay moss without needing to worry about the status of my pen test being active. And I'm also gonna quickly take care of a few of these guards here already. No, excuse me. There we go. All right. Oh, Norma, there are five to the left and then two to the right. Are we going to get rid of here? That's all the claim was, thankfully. And I'm just going to empty my magazine like that. Get ready. We got a little bit of time before she will reach the first, like, silo. And... Oh, unfortunate. Didn't want to hit the bird. Uh, we're just going <laughs> to wait here. We want to keep a certain distance to Emma, because if we're too close and then look at her, even if she's like at the bottom of the scope, it can happen that she falls over, which costs us time. And we also want to very, very quickly get rid of the guards here so they don't call in an alert, because else she would cower and then wait for like six or ten seconds before she starts moving again. So what this looks like, I have nothing to do here besides shooting some of these ciphers. It is actually key that we have a few loot set here. So after the first three guards are done, she will have enough distance to us, so she normally doesn't fall over anymore. I can stand around the ammo box, and I'm going to shoot constantly here these ciphers that are coming out. And unfortunately, if she does fall over, it's roughly a 7 to 8 second time loss. Which, on a <laughs> section which is on rails, is something you really don't want to have to yeah. suffer with. No thanks. <laughs> There she goes. There will be a fourth guard coming from top left here once again. And she's just turning around. Very easy to miss if you're just uh, upgrading. For example, from very easy, which is where most people start. Uh, if they turn to normal and they forget that there will be a fourth guard coming around, then he walks all the way to the right and then shoot Emma basically from behind as she's like here. It's like very awkward to be like, oh yeah, right, there are four guards, not just three that you see immediately. <laughs> Alright, there we go. Move to Cyphers, then we're gonna take care of, and we gotta wait now for a little bit for Emma to move along. 
So I'm going to use this time quickly to also shout out the Metal Gear Speedrunners. If you want to learn how to run this game, or of course any other in this series, I mean, you know, the Master Collection is coming out on October 24th. Maybe you want to start joining then when you can play it again, for example, on PS5 or Xbox. Or for the first time, in case of Metal Gear 2 and Metal Gear Solid 3 on PC, check out the community, of course. We have a great Discord server where we have lots of resources where you can learn how to run this game or any other. And of course, also a great wiki where we put all the knowledge that we have as a community so you can easily find all the threads that I'm doing right now, for example, with tutorials handily explained so you can start learning the game for yourself. There we go, waiting for this guy. Thankfully, on normal, they just take three shots and then they're done. It can sometimes happen if you don't shoot them in the head on the extreme, they are very sturdy. But this is why I appreciate normal as a difficulty. It's a great in-between step from the very easy category where everyone starts and where, especially in the beginning, you struggle a little bit maybe with the boss fights because you're brand new to the game. But in the end, very easy it turns out to be like just trying to grind out the level of perfection in terms of movement to save time. Then on normal, it starts where the boss fights are coming back again as a big focus for time saves. And then extreme, of course, everything is like super important to that. And I think at least a great, you know, learning curve for you when you start in the beginning, start on very easy, get used to the game, do normal to get used to what will eventually be, for example, the race, the final challenge of the game on Extreme and European Extreme. And it's a great way also if you want to just get a big boss rank, for example, getting familiar with the game and upgrading it more and more across the difficulties. There you go. And I, I just love how chaotic normal can be compared to very easy and your yeah. extreme so if you're going for the big boss rank in euro you're not going to be getting any alerts so you're playing a bit more careful but you're not going to have these wild strats with guards constantly <laughs> shooting at you or trying to avoid them yeah and normal very easy you, yeah your alerts don't carry over so normal is definitely keeps you on your toes mm -hmm. yeah i mean starting an extreme if you do have certain mistakes like most of them you just accept your fate you did a mistake to continue and try again but in normal there are so many leeways where you can just go ah you know what i'm gonna carry on i don't have full health but it will still be fine because you have enough health for what we want to do so that's what i kind of appreciate about normal as well it's still very friendly for beginners but it does introduce you to what will eventually be you know the final versions of bosses they just take a little bit longer than after that all right, we're almost done. As soon as soon as she's like between these two pillars, we're gonna go into the next boss fight of Vamp 2, and let's hope that I can quickly finish him in one magazine. So don't blink or you'll miss it. There you go. Yeah, we just gotta ping slightly to the left, send the whole magazine into him, and we're done. That's one of the great uses of Turbo. You can of course mash manually and do the same thing, but with Turbo it's slightly faster, of course, still. It's time for our next countdown segment. Uh, something we haven't explained the first time around, or second time. Uh, whenever you die doing one of these countdown segments, you actually get sent back to the beginning of the countdown. So, if I leave the room now, go to the bridge and die on the bridge, I actually get sent back all the way to the beginning where the countdown was before. So, at the beginning of this room. It takes a lot of time, so hopefully we don't fall. But I did definitely do a good job in leaving as many panels up as I can on the bridge, so I can just go like this now. And immediately start with my carpets here. So I think yeah, I knocked out three, but only like two groups of panels, four, and we're good to go like this. Yeah, something that doesn't happen if you are running very easy, uh, the panels will always be put back. So when you're running yeah. this, you can just sprint across them or not have to worry about your cartwheel placement. Mm -hmm. Quite so. If I remember correctly, it's also the same for easy difficulty, which is criminally underrun. Uh, easy and hard difficulty have the problem that they are not attractive enough. They're just between those, you know, very easy, normal and extreme slash European extreme difficulties. It's been a but uh, they're definitely fun as well. I can vouch for them. The and uh, yeah, a little fun fact here in the segment. It's just a tutorial, so I'm not going to press any button and you will see I will still survive on the way because it's literally just a tutorial for the actual choking session later. For which we also want to use turbo, of course. Of Have they altered your memory too? 
I also just noticed on, uh, we're playing on the PC version, by the way. This is uh, Medical Solid 2 Substance, technically, the second release. And Substance originally released on the OG Xbox. From that OG Xbox, we got the PC port, which after a few patches, it actually still runs very well. And um, I'm hoping that this version will still be put back uh, to online stores or like GOG. It would be a shame if only the master version comes out and not this version again. So we're hoping, because for like almost two years, I think, for the 35th uh, anniversary of Metal Gear, they had to remove Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3 from online stores because of license issues with video footage in the cutscenes. And this was definitely one of those uh, versions of the game that are great to run. We have many community-made tools for it, and uh, it also plays great. Because, for example, the IGT doesn't count loads. Even if the game slows down, the IGT accounts for that. So it's very comparable to any other platform, no matter if you have a high-end PC or like a laptop. It does run on so many systems, and all of the times are very comparable based on your actual performance. Which is what I really appreciate about, about this version of the game. So I'm gonna quickly ah, not make it past this guard. It's fine. Normally you do a cobbler into him and then you know you can just quickly take a leap of faith over the gap here. There's a backup, I'm just gonna walk all the way, which is fine. I'm gonna take some damage, but as soon as like as long as we don't fall down, you know, and not die, we're still good on time. Hey, yeah, we're just going like this now. De definitely don't want to risk going over that leap of faith if they've spotted you. Because they yep. can shoot you, you can fall down, and then that's just an even bigger time loss with a bigger risk of getting hit too many times and dying before you make it through to this section. Yep, absolutely. Uh, because the same way how when we swap weapons, we reset the animation. If you get hit from an enemy shot, for example, it also resets the animation. And so the copy that we would normally make over this gap would also be interrupted and we immediately fall down in the middle of the copy, unfortunately. So yeah, if you get spotted like that, just take the long way around. It's fine. It cost me like eight seconds, for example. It's not that big. Rather, you know, than dying, I take these eight seconds and just walk around a little bit longer. <laughs> Fucking quarty naked, right? Funny enough, in the VR mission, uh, he's called X Raiden, Cross Raiden. So I'm not sure what is about that. And yeah, in the beginning of the segment, there's yet another tutorial that we actually don't uh, hear about because normally, if you swing the right. Uh, stick, you do a swing here with the sword, and that actually starts a little bit of a, I think, 42 second countdown, which acts then as the tutorial for, you know, using this new weapon. So I can swing around, but it doesn't speed up the countdown, but we have to swing at least once or else the countdown doesn't start. So I'm going to quickly go here into my box. I'm going to put on the rations once again. We have four of them. We have more than enough. I actually can... I'm just going to start the fight with a little bit more health, just to be safe. And then we're going to rush into Tango 1. So we're about done. There we go. Got a few more cutscenes, codex, and then we're going to start with the so-called Tengu 1 encounter, which is basically another version of Guard Rush as we had in the Tanker chapter. And we're going to actually glitch out through it. I'm going to go here in my box to not be interrupted. To this guy. To these two guys, to this little hand, and then I'm gonna go here, do a first person punch punch kick, and as I turn around, I let go of first person and I glitch through the door. Very similar to what we did in the tanker chapter, only that we didn't throw an item. Which would technically still work as well, but this punch punch kick was uh, known before and actually works a little bit nicer for us. Time to put <laughs> Snake to sleep. This is the only time we use the M9 here on the plant section. It's only used to send Snake sleeping. And we do that specifically because for the Tengu 2 fight, we want to use the so-called coolant skip. Yeah, coolant skip is the call. And I would love, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would love to explain how it works, but I can't. <laughs> it was known that even on PlayStation 2, if you have these guards here, the Tengus, um, basically the game side are you're not gonna fight them. I guess it probably is like a safety fail. You know, if you don't fight the mm. bosses, for example, because something happens, the fight would still stop and we can manipulate basically these guards in not attacking us at all if we spray them the entire time on the pc yeah, version it, um shout out to platonic guy we found out that we also have to do a little bit more so we're gonna do this for a minute and 10 seconds and then we're gonna kick at least two of them over so they fall on the ground and then the game's like all right you're done i'm just gonna let you go 
you know, without doing this cool and skip, normally you'd have to, on normal you'd have to defeat, I believe it's sixty eight Tengus. A lot. So do, <laughs> doing this, it's definitely a lot quicker because when you start killing the Tengus, they'll only they drip feed into the arena. Yep. And even if the alert doesn't drop all the way, if it just drops like one pixel, we know we're good. Alright, it's coming up the probably greatest fight of the entire game, the race fight. On normal difficulty, we have to take out um, seven health bars worth of race. But it doesn't mean that actually like seven of these races have to completely die, but only the worth of s the total amount of seven health bars. It's a, development a little bit of a trick to it, a little bit of strategy, and I'm sure I can pull it off. So let's see how it goes. The is a In the meantime, we can you know do all the menus that we want here. There's a little audio file that plays in the background, and we can do all the menus we want. We can pause here like that. You know. So. I'm sorry, can enjoy the animation as we do this and wait. Puppets. I'm gonna hydrate and I'm gonna recommend everyone in chat as well, please hydrate. <laughs> Solid Snake's sudden appearance, your arrival. It was obvious the Patriots were among my ranks. I had to smoke out the agent before the mission. Certainly, we haven't found anything yet to skip this little phase, but at least it's what, one and a half minutes, I think. Jack. Gives us enough of a break oh, 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 to prepare. Sorry, what? Every yeah, I was going to say, it's around, I think, about 90 seconds for the speech to go through. Mm. And it's, it's, it's a nice, nice chill time before probably the most fun boss in the game as well. Mm -hmm. With the ray fight, is is good fun. Alright, so we're going to send a few rockets into the knees and hats here. The knees open the mouth, and then when the mouth is open, that gives basically a critical shot with maximum damage that we can give. We're going to do that twice per each of these race. And then we're gonna attack this one in the middle once more, and that one on the right. Now two of these are already one shot. Just gonna evade the damage here. And the one that's on the left, that would be a two shot, but it'll still be fine. So here we go. Two are already done out of the seven, and the third one will now jump on stage. I'll have to delay him a little bit. There we go. I'm gonna get more ammo like this. And then two new ones are coming from the right. And the cool thing is that actually we do have plenty of time here. Only one can be on stage at all times. So it gives us more than enough ample time here to damage these ones before they even jump on stage. And ideally I do this in a manner where they take enough damage. So I didn't fully do that. But it's still be fine. There are only two shots left here. And which I didn't hit. Oh, that's unfortunate. So now we're a little bit struggling. Normally you want to hit him on the right leg, so he turns towards us. Ah, no worries, I got this here under control. I've been doing this <laughs> for the past week on extreme difficulty, where timings are even harsher, so hey, it will be fine. <laughs> it really just matters that you keep the one that's on stage away from you, because he does all the damaging attacks. The ones that are coming from the outside with, you know, the rocks that chase after you, if you just keep walking for the entire time, you still will be fine. I'm gonna keep this one here. There you go, and then there's a new one coming in, which I will focus on now. The one that's all the way on the other end will jump on stage soon. Oh, actually not. Oh, that's mean. I'm gonna take him out like this, and then the third one that's new should come on stage soon. Yep, there you go. Got a little bit. Uh, he was dead already. Why does he send off more rockets? How mean. <laughs> I believe somebody wants to have a bad review on Yelp soon. And yeah, because we were on the ground, uh, this little storm attack doesn't hit us, thankfully. <laughs> it will be fine, guys. I got this under control. No worries. <laughs> thankfully, it's only seven of these health bars, and then we're already done with the fight. Could have been better, sure, but didn't die. That's all what counts. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what matters. Yep. And it's uh, definitely... Uh, not the 20 rays that you need to take out on Euro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's still a backup with it, how you can control the fight. As I said, mainly focus on the one that's on stage. And Valeria trying in chat called out to not use turbo, so I'm going to do that. Because maybe on normal it's just 15 seconds of mashing, it's not that bad. I'm still young enough though, I can do that. And that's it.
Now we're getting ready for the final fight. So time's coming up in like uh, two minutes, hopefully, if everything goes well. So we got a little bit of codec and dialogue happening here, as most people know if they play the game already. Little fun fact, if you have fast forward active, it's a little bit faster rather than just turbo here. So that's why I always try to get this fast forwarding version of this dialogue. And we got one more conversation. There you go. Two more cutscenes and then the final fight begins. And I'll let Ru explain how it works. So with Solidus, you want to uh, just bait out those uh, kick attacks. And then you can just do um, lethal swipes on him. Whenever he shoots those, you want to cart Will through them, and then you're able to get a punch punch, get your slashes on him. And what he's house is doing, he's manipulating it so he's not falling over and going over. Uh, he lost his eye in the Harrier fight. So if you go over to his left side, he can't see you as well. Um, therefore, he won't be able to block those double slashes that he's performing. Yeah, sometimes it's a little bit annoying and I have to actively uh, poke him, but that's the first phase. We're going to go to the second phase now where he will dash around a little bit, block in once more and then do the same loop again until the fight's over. Yeah, I feel like this fight, you're fighting the camera more than you're fighting Solidus. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, <laughs> especially if you're on the top end of the level or at the bottom. There you go, people's elbow, love to see that. Oops. Was too slow for the first set, but we're basically back in the loop now. So yeah, you two from the left, on, oh. and two from the right. Yeah, you just rinse and repeat until Oop. Solidus is defeated. Yep, get ready for time. Now oh, come on. And that's time. Normally there would be also like nine and a half minutes of uh, now credits and video happening. So normally we stop marathon time here. And we can also see thanks to the plugin here that the final IGT on the score screen would be a 10913. Not quite where I wanted it to be, but you know, it is what it is. I think it was a good one overall and I hope you all out there in the audience enjoyed it. Thank you so much, Ru, for commentating with me today. And That's of course, no problem. Thank you for having me. And of course, good luck for the rest of the marathon and thanks for having us here.